Okay, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Uh, my name is David Politis. I'm the founder and CEO of BetterCloud. We're the makers of Flash Panel. So today uh, we are going to give you a quick introduction to Flash Panel, tell you a little bit about why we built this tool. Uh, and we have Sarah Robinson here, who is one of our account executives, and she's going to run through a 25-minute demo uh, of the product. We're then going to have Eli Winderbaum, who's our community and operations manager, uh, join in and tell you a little bit more about how you can get support for the product, how you can find uh, articles about how, how, to, uh, how to perform certain tasks within, within the product. And then I'll jump back on and answer a couple of questions and, and give you some, some important links and helpful links at, at the end of the presentation. So uh, before we get started today, what I would like to do is just take a quick survey of the audience to see who we're talking to. Um, so I'm going to open up a survey right now. One second. OK. Um, so we don't have the survey set up. So um, the, the question really was going to be whether or not you've installed Flash Panel. Um, and at this point, uh, we, we, re we did another one of these earlier on today, and uh, the vast majority of the attendees had not uh, installed Flash Panel yet. So that's the approach we're going to take uh, with this presentation with the assumption you have not yet installed the product. So what is Flash Panel? Uh, Flash Panel is a easy to use, infinitely scalable, cloud-based management application for Google Apps. Uh, we, our team is the same team that built Sherpa Tools, which for the last two and a half years has been the number one Google Apps admin tool in the marketplace. And we've decided that we, we had the choice to make, did we want to build on top of Sherpa Tools and add functionality into that product, which was about two and a half years old, or did we want to start from scratch and uh, take a fresh look at the entire approach that, that, that we had? And we decided to do the latter. Um, so we, we built Flash Panel. We started building Flash Panel in December of last year um, by talking to a number of customers, Sherpa Tools users, non-Sherpa Tools users, uh, small, large, and, and gathering feedback around what features and functionality people wanted to see uh, in the product. We've, we've been in a private beta phase for the last uh, two months. And we, we shut that down pretty quickly after the first five days. We, we had about 150,000 seats installed. So uh, we actually stopped taking registrations and, and really focused on going to those companies that had installed in the first five days and getting feedback and fixing bugs and, and adding a couple of features uh, here and there. So uh, this, this product is really uh, built to serve any size company. Our, our smallest account is two users. And our largest account is about 35,000 users. So we have the full spectrum. And we believe that there's value for, for any company that's on the Google Apps platform. The, this product, Flash Panel, will be replacing Sherpa Tools. Um, again, like I said, Sherpa Tools has been the number one application in the Google Apps marketplace for a while. Um, we, we, we've uh, amassed about 37,000 companies um, that have been using uh, Sherpa tools over the last couple of years, and we are currently in the process of migrating uh, that group of, of customers over to Flash Panel. Um, you can see some of the feedback we've gotten from, from customers throughout the beta process. If you look in the Google Apps Marketplace, we already have a couple of reviews from companies that installed uh, yesterday and, and early on today. Uh, but the, the feedback so far has been tremendous, and we believe that we've already built the, 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 the premier Google Apps management tool uh, in the market. And we're going to continue to add functionality. We're really just at the very beginning here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to uh, a demo. Uh, we're we're going to try to keep the demo to about 25, 30 minutes, uh, which is pretty short. Uh, this, this product really can, a full demo can take about an hour. Um, but what we're going to try to do is just cover the high-level information in about 25 to 30 minutes. And what I would ask is that uh, we, we have a number of attendees on, on this call. We have about 100. And, and so for, for us, we, we'd like to, um, to have you ask questions via chat. 
uh, throughout the, the process here. So if you have any questions throughout the demo, uh, me and Eli will be answering the questions uh, through the chat in the GoToMeeting. Um, so please, please direct any questions there. And I'm going to hand this off to Sarah and give the controls over to her. And she's going to, um, to, to take this and, and, and go through a demo. Again, there's quite a bit of functionality here in the product. Uh, but what we're going to try to show you is high level uh, the, the features that we think are, are most valuable. And if when, the, when this is done, if, if you're interested in a, a private demo, um, you can email Sarah. Her email address is right there. And we'll do a one-on-one -on -one demo for you, um, you know, at your convenience. So please hold while I uh, transfer this over to Sarah. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sarah, and as David said before, please feel free to ask any questions via the chat, and uh, Eli and David will respond to them as they come through. So what you're looking at right now is the home screen for the Flash Panel application. At a quick view, you can see your directory, your accounts and licenses, your unused, your active, and your suspended. Some quick links to create a user group and OU and some of our quick links to tools. Um, we have the app Butler. It's a chat bot that can be pushed out to users, which we'll um, dive into in a little bit. We have the Google Guru, which is our video tutorial site. It has some tips and tricks on how to use different aspects of Google Apps. And then we have our popular tools. And this is the section that we feel really separates Flash Panel from any other admin tool um, out there. It really it makes the product stand out. So from here we'll go into the users, and this will return a list of all of the users in your domain. We can search for a user, so I'll search for myself, filter, and then we'll click into my profile and you can see all the information that you can associate with the user. So you can see up here, you can add a photo for your users. Um, you have your user's first and last name, the title, the email address, your docs and email space consumed, and then you have your group. So this shows all of the groups that I am a member of. Um, the crown means that I am a group owner. Um, I can actually come in here and remove uh, myself directly from a group, click in and view the group, uh, remove from all groups or add to a group. So we've gotten some feedback that groups management in the Google Apps control panel wasn't the easiest to use. Um, we feel that Flash Panel makes it a bit more intuitive, easier to use, and speeds up the process of um, adding users to groups. Down here we have the contact information. You can see there are a ton of fields that you can fill in. Um, you can fill in as much or as little as you would like. And then on the right here you have your status view. So this includes a number of our tools, um, the account activity, the created date, the status. You can actually hover over these and directly take action. So I can come in here and suspend the user, or maybe I can hide the user in the directory, and so on. If we go back to the directory, we can click into groups, and this will return all of the groups listed in your domain. If you click into a group, it returns information um, looks similar to the user profile. You can add a photo, the group name, the member count, the email address. You have your nested groups. You can click in and see the users, and then your group settings, which you can adjust um, however you would like. And on the right here, you have the status, similar to that user profile view, where you can hover over and take direct actions, and then, of course, your group owners. The same goes for the OUs. You can click in. You can see you know, a list of your OUs. You can come in here 
and create a new org unit and your shared contacts. So these are all the shared contacts. You can search for a shared contact. Filter. And we can come in here and see all the information for Lily. You can add a photo. And then you can also add these tags. So Elegant Affairs is a catering company our organization uses. And we've added the tag catering. Well, from here, we'll go into the tools, and we will walk through um, most of them. Um, so we can come into signatures, and we can create a signature for a user. So we come in here, and you can actually choose from a template. So we'll click the classic flash panel signature, continue, and we want to set this for the New York sales team, and for myself as well. Continue. It will show you a preview. All this information is pulled from my user profile. Um, and then we have this schedule and apply. And you can apply this every single day. So every day, the signature is going to be pushed out to the New York sales team and myself. So I, of course, we can all go in and change our signature every single day. But the next morning, this signature is going to be pushed right back out. And hopefully, our users will recognize that this is a company policy. And they will stop going into their settings and changing their signature. And then you can come into the mailbox here, compose and you'll see the signature has been placed in the body of the email. We'll walk through the, the ProVision user process. Um, this is a feature that we've added recently uh, to Flash Panel. And we will choose to the ProVision Eli Winderbaum. We can add an executor on the deprovision process, so David, Politis is Eli's manager, and David Hardwick is part of our onboarding and offboarding uh, process. So we want to notify him about the deprovisioning process as we go through it, and we'll save, and we can get started. So we can walk through step by step. No, we do want to keep this account viewable to the other users. You can add some notes here to appear in the report. No, we don't want to change the user's password. No, we don't want to create an auto-reply because what we're going to do in the next step is we're actually going to delegate Eli's in, uh, inbox to David Politis. So yes, we want to delegate that email access. It will default, since David is the executor on the deprovisioning process, it will default put his email address into this box here. And now David will have delegated access to Eli's inbox. He'll be able to go in and respond as if he were Eli. Yes, we want to transfer the doc ownership. This will redirect you to the Google Control Panel um, so that you and tell you how you can transfer this ownership to another user. And then it will remind you who the executor is. Yes, we want to transfer sites. And yes, we want to transfer the calendars. Perhaps Eli has some outstanding meetings, phone calls. We want David to take those over. We can transfer the ownership and membership for the groups. And then this will bring us into my checklist. So we can add some tasks here. So we see that we have the to retrieve the building access equipment, retrieve the laptop. And maybe Eli also has a corporate card. We want to make sure we get that. We have not got had a chance to get that back from him yet. Continue. And then from here, you can choose to um, download an archive. This will redirect you to um, Backupify. Um, and Better Cloud can provide a 20% discount um, for the product, but we will choose not to archive the account right now. And then we want to leave this account active, so no. We do not want to suspend it right now. 
but we can set a calendar reminder. So now this will remind us 15 days from now to come back in um, and suspend the user that the user is still active. And then we have our summary uh, wrap up and it will tell you everything that has been completed, what is incomplete, and you know what tasks remain. And then we can finish and confirm delete user. From here, we'll go into the Apps Butler. Um, this is a tool that was available in Sherpa Tools. It was known as the Directory Bot. Um, so if any of you are Sherpa Tools users, you might be familiar with this um, function. We've added some additional functionality. So from here, you can, of course, go in and search for users. So I'm on a phone call. Somebody quickly wants to know David Politis' phone number. I can type in his name, and it will return his contact information. We can also do this directly from our chat. And it will return all of his contact information as well. Um, the way that the Apps Butler is pushed out to your users is you would invite them directly from Flash Panel. They would accept the invitation, and the Apps Butler would appear in their chat list. A feature we've added is the broadcast feature. So we can broadcast messages as an admin in Flash Panel. We can broadcast to our users, so anybody who has accepted the Apps Butler will re receive this chat. It will pop up in their chat, so we want to broadcast Fire Drill in 10 minutes. This will then pop up in their chat. If they've accepted the Apps Butler, they will see there's a Fire Drill in 10 minutes, and they can follow standard procedure. We also have the quick links. You can backslash links, and it will return all of the links set up by the admin. Um, for your domain, you can come in here and, and add some links, remove them, um, however, whichever links you want to show up. We have our email audit monitors, so we can come in here and we can create a monitor. So, for instance, I am the manager of the sales team, and I suspect that. You know, one of my users might not be responding to customers in an appropriate manner, maybe not responding to customers on time. So I want to monitor his inbox and make sure that this is happening. So Aaron Carpenter for some reason that's not populating for me right now. So we'll use Eli. Um, we'll add that pairing. Continue, and maybe I want to monitor the incoming, outgoing, and the chat for the rest of the month. And now I will receive a BCC copy of every incoming, outgoing, and chat to and from Eli without Eli or the sender knowing that this is going on. And of course, we have our email delegates. So as some of you might know already that you can create an email delegate directly from the Google Apps settings, but this allows the admin to do this for their users. So we have an executive, David Hardwick. He has hired Sarah Robinson as an assistant, and he wants this to be set up prior to her start date. So the admin can come in and say that Sarah Robinson can access the inbox of David Hardwick. We can add that pairing, apply it, and then when we go into my inbox here, we can see when we click on the top right that David Hardwick's inbox has been delegated. We can click in, it will load his mail, and now I can go in and prioritize his inbox as he's traveling a lot. I can answer emails that you know he's told me to answer on his behalf. We also have a number of email tools. Um, in addition to the signatures, delegates, and monitors, we have the send as alias that you can set up for your users, labels, filters, forwarding. Um, I won't go into all of them, but I will show you this IMAP pop feature as it is a policy enforcement tool we have. So we can come in here and create a policy. So perhaps we want to turn pop and IMAP on, but only for a specific set of our users. So maybe we only want to turn it on for Hugh and Phyllis, continue, and we can schedule and apply so that every day the IMAP and POP will be turned on for Hugh and Phyllis. 
and we can apply now and schedule. We go back into the email tools. We also have the auto reply. So the admin can come in and say your office is closed um, for the holidays in December um, for a week. You can come in and set an auto reply. Um, you know, our office is closed for the next week. We'll reopen on Monday, the following date. Um, and that will be the auto reply set for all of your users. Or if one of your users goes away on vacation, forgets to set up an autoresponder, um, the admin can actually come in here and set this up for that specific user. We have our web clips and general settings. Configure your language settings for the user. There's a ton of things that you can do um, within your email tools. We also have this mobile contact sync. So we can set this up for our users. Um, this is for your shared contacts and your user profiles. So we can add subscribers. So Dennis Abbott started today. We want to make sure he has access to the shared contacts and the user profiles. So we select Dennis, continue, we check both, continue, review and apply. And then I will show you how this appears um, in the contacts in my inbox that I set it up for myself earlier. We'll go into contacts here. And you can see that these two folders are underneath, you know, living inside of the My Contacts. So you have the separate folders here. They're also in My Contacts. So once a user sets up um, Google Sync for their mobile device, these contacts will appear there as well. From here, we'll go into the reports. We have two activity reports. As we build some additional features into Flash Panel, this section will become more robust. Um, but right now, we have the inactive users by login and inactive users by email. So if we click into the inactive users by login, it will show you the last login date for your users. Um, you have by 14 days and by 30 days. You can also export all of this information to a spreadsheet. And the inactivity report by email. Um, so this comes in handy for large organizations who might have a number of their employees working remotely. Um, you can come in and see when that last webmail access date is so that you can check in on your users, see if they're logging into their email. Um, and again, you have that 14 and 30 days bar graph at the top. And you can also export this to a spreadsheet. We have our audit logs, which keeps track of every single action being happening inside a flash panel. So you can see here, before I set up that mobile sync for Dennis Abbott, so Sarah Robinson logged in July 10th at the time. I went into the mobile sync. The focus was on Dennis Abbott, and it will tell you exactly what I did. You can filter by section. So if we want to check on the monitors, make sure that all the monitors make sense, um, just make sure everything's going the way it should. We can also export all of this to a spreadsheet. And then our notification. So this shows keeps track of every action going on in Flash Panel and if the action has been completed, in progress, completed with errors, it will tell you what the errors are or failed to complete. In the settings, we have the domain sync. So this is the way Flash Panel syncs with your Google Apps um, domain. The hope is that you would install Flash Panel, sync it with your domain one time, and then perhaps use only Flash Panel moving forward. Any action you take in Flash Panel is real time, so that change will appear in the Google Apps Control Panel. So the only time you do need to sync is when you take any actions outside of Flash Panel. If you do something directly from the Control Panel, then you would need to sync your domain. You have your manual sync. You can also schedule syncs to occur. And then you have your sync report, and that these are the people who it will be sent to. We can edit the report. We can actually add users and remove them. The time zone, you select your time zone. Um, we're located in New York, so we have New York selected. And the access control is a feature um, that we've added in this latest release. Uh, we have a help desk role set up. So we can come in here and view the role. Um, so the help desk role, these people will be able to create, spend, reset passwords and contact info for the users, create and edit groups, create and edit OUs, create and edit shared contacts, and so on. You can see 
anything checked is what this um, access role can perform. And then we can assign users this role. So we have Dennis Abbott and Eli Winderbaum. They are two um, employees on our help desk team, so we will assign them the help desk role. And then your group settings, you can enable the public options, turn them on, turn them off. And that is very quickly and briefly the entire application, most of the tools. Um, again, there is a lot in the application that we can dig into deeper, but for now, um, that pretty much covers all of the really important features and tools. And so that also now leads us to our support. So if you click on support up here on the top right in flash panel, this will take you to our support page. Um, it has our knowledge base, which contains articles, um, help you find some answers. And if you can't find your answers, you can submit a ticket. And I will pass this on to Eli, who will go over um, our support system. Hi everyone, this is David Politis again. So uh, before I pass this off to Eli, um, I just want to answer a couple of the questions that had come in um, throughout the, 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 the demo. Um, so one of the questions that came up that I just wanted to, to give some more color on is the end user login. Um, so a number of people have asked about their end users and whether or not they're going to be able to log into the application. So uh, we are building that. It's going to be released at the end of August, and the, that, 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 that will give the ability to end users to log into Flash Panel. They'll be able to edit their own profile, profile picture, contact information. They'll also be able to uh, browse the directory of the other people within the company, as well as shared contacts. Um, and uh, it's it, you know we're, we're excited for that. We think that there's a quite a, quite a bit we can do with the end users um, to help you um, you know increase adoption um, of, of the Google Apps Suite. So we're working on that. Uh, the other uh, item that that uh, came up was around pricing um, and what the pricing was going to look like uh, for the product. And uh, the pricing right now is it's going to stay free for at least the next couple of months. Um, but we believe that uh, come time to, to where, where there's a paid version, it's probably going to cost about $10 per user per year. There will be some favorable pricing to nonprofits, similar to how, how Google handles that. Um, but it will be around that price point. We're still working on it. could be a little less. Um, but but that's the that's where we think we're we're going to be. There will still be a free version um, in the marketplace. Functionality will be available to you, but there will be some premium features. So that's the second major question. Um, third was uh, about whether or not the email settings overwrite the existing settings that a user has. And the answer is yes, they do. Uh, when when you push out uh, email setting, whether it's IMAP pop whether it's an email signature, uh, auto reply, all those email settings will actually overwrite what a user currently has in place. Uh, if a user goes back in and changes those settings, then obviously those will now override what you put in place. Um, but that's why we created the scheduling uh, feature in the email tools. Uh, that is actually our enforcement feature. So you can actually set it up so that every day uh, at the same time, you enforce a specific policy, a specific setting uh, on a group of users or a specific user. Um, and so that feature has been extremely popular, um, and we think that that will continue to be popular. And, and that, that, um, that, that allows you to enforce these email settings. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, so, so, that's the, um, so that's the functionality that, that you see today. Uh, we're just at the beginning here. Uh, this is our, our first public release, and we plan to add new functionality once every four to five weeks. 
Um, and, and so you'll continue to see some, some big improvements here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pass this off to Eli. And Eli is going to tell you a little bit more about the uh, support function that we have here and the, the knowledge base that we've built. Um, so I'm going to hand it off to Eli now. Hi, everybody. This is Eli. Thanks again for joining us today. Uh, I'm really excited just because um, over the past two months I've had uh, really good contact with the initial uh, private beta users, and now I'm excited to speak to a whole new group of people. Um, so basically what the customer support is, um, it's located at support.bettercloud.com. And as Sarah showed you, um, while you're in the app, you click on the support link on the top right. It'll take you directly uh, there. And I've split it up into three categories, which are knowledge-based articles. These are articles that I've written along with uh, articles written by our engineers and developers. And the second part is the community forums. And hopefully this uh, is a place where you, uh, the Google Apps admins and experts, can go to ask questions and help each other. And this is something that I'll be monitoring as well. Um, and lastly, uh, you can, of course, always open a uh, support ticket with me. This will come directly to me, and I'll be able to get back to you uh, hopefully within 24 hours or one business day. So that, that's my goal. So let's take a quick look um, at the application itself. So here we are at the home page, and you can see it's split up into these three categories like I mentioned. So in the knowledge base, I uh, have it uh, categorized the same way that the application is, the directory, tools, reports, and settings. And I have a couple of other categories, uh, getting started, FAQ, and release notes. I'm also going to be adding a, a known bugs and issues. Uh, this is a great during uh, the beta stage where you can let us know uh, what you're experiencing and if others are as well, and hopefully we'll be able to address them uh, even quicker. Uh, so we, let's take an example of uh, one of the uh, articles here. So this is access control. Uh, Sarah talked to you about this. I have the instructions here on what it is, how to create a role, and then give you a nice screenshot of what you can and what are capable of doing. And here you are uh, able to manage and delete the existing roles. Some of them are linked back to um, a higher level here. So you can see everything having to do with settings. And this is a work in progress. So as the, as the application scales, our support will as well, which I'm very excited about. And next we have the community forums. It's divided into two parts, which are ask a question and feature requests. So if you have a feature request, um, that would really benefit you and your company, um, chances are it will probably be helpful for other admins as well. So I really encourage you to um, submit a feature request here. And if you have a question that you think would also benefit um, others in, in the Google Apps ecosystem here, um, ask a question here. And you can either um, chime in and help each other, or I can monitor it and answer the questions. So this is a great resource here. And Lastly, you can submit a ticket. This will come directly to me. And this is what I really get excited about is hearing um, you know, instance cases, use cases, where uh, something really specific to you would be helpful, or perhaps you're having an issue with your domain. And I'll be able to get back to you uh, within one business day at, at the latest. So uh, be sure to include you know, screenshots and any sort of pertinent informa information there. So if you have any questions about the uh, support site, um, you can email me or just open up a ticket as well. OK, so, um, so now what we're going to do is just um, quickly show you a couple of slides here. Um, if, if you want to get the most recent news, you can check out uh, the, the company site at bettercloud.com. Um, our blog this month is actually dedicated to uh, admin tools and uh, to admin, admin features inside of Google Apps. So you should check out our blog, bettercloud.com slash blog. We also are holding weekly webinars uh, specifically geared towards our Flash Panel customers. So you can go to flashpanel.com slash webinars to, to stay up to speed on, on the, the weekly webinars now. And we're going to continue to do this for the life uh, you know, of, of the company. So if there are new features that come out and you're interested in, in checking them out, um, you can always go to flashpanel.com slash webinars. 
And lastly, we have a site that we built, uh, the Google Guru or AskTheGuru.com. That's G-O-O-R-U.com. Um, and that site gives uh, video tips and how-tos uh, to Google Apps users and administrators. Uh, every time Google comes out with a new feature, which I think last year was over 100, um, we come out with a video uh, reflecting how to use that feature and, and try to give you some, some ideas of use cases. So um, check out AskTheGuru.com when you have a chance as well. It may be useful to you as well as your users. Um, and we're going to, uh, in the chat right now, I'm going to send along the, um, the URL for uh, installing the product. So in the chat, you've got flashpanel.com slash marketplace. So that is the, um, that, that's, the, um, that's the URL in, to install FlashPanel. I suggest that you guys um, you know, go out and, and, and install FlashPanel when you have a chance and just uh, and test it out. And like Eli said, we, we, really, we built this product for you. We built this product for admins like yourself. Uh, this is supposed to make your life easier. So please tell us what you want to see. Features, we're, we're, we're going to listen. Um, that's how we built this product was through customer feedback, and we're going to continue to do that. So um, I, don't, you know, I, I really would appreciate any, any ideas, any thoughts. Um, if, you're, if you're interested in setting up a one-on-one -on -one demo, um, you can email sarah.robinson at bettercloud. Uh, if you have any feedback for me, you can always email me directly at dave at bettercloud.com. I'll um, be happy to get back to you. So um, thank you very much. Uh, there are a couple of questions that are still outstanding here. Um, we're, it's a little too many for us to just answer over the phone. So we're going to probably reach out to a couple of you individually and uh, answer your questions via email or, or we'll set up a time to talk. But um, we really appreciate it today. We appreciate the support. Um, please, please install Flash Panel, and if you like it, we'd love for you to leave a review in the marketplace. That would be extremely helpful as well. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, have a great day.